What's up guys, we're carrying on with this uh, rating ladder climb. Coming off the back, actually two losses. So I'm 10.85 now, opponent's rated 9.87. And what the hell? Okay, this is like a king's Indian attack, right? If he's gonna finketo his bishop, put his knight here. Um, interesting. But his bishop is gonna be behind his own e4 pawn, which doesn't really make that much sense. So I'm going to develop my knight as normal. Let's attack this pawn, might as well. It kind of reduces his options. He really now needs to defend. d3, bishop g2. This is a funny old move, man. Unless he's thinking about f4, which is... Okay, d3 is played. I'm already thinking this side of the board is looking weak. I want to develop. I like bishop c5. Nothing wrong with knight c6 either. I could even contest the center. If pawn takes, I've got queen takes looking at this. Let's go for it. Let's go straight at the center. Why not? An opponent's played wasted time and really given over the initiative back to black with the move g3 and then kind of fail to follow up with that. I don't think d3 was correct here. Yes, it achieved what he wanted to do, which is to pr protect the pawn, but didn't come with development. So if this and queen takes, he's already weakened, I, I would say. There, queen takes. I'm attacking this. Bishop can't block. Um, knight could. And do I have e4 hitting the knight? Pawn takes, queen takes, queen. Okay, if I take. We, we could go into an early ending, of course. Um. Need to consider the move bishop g4. It's a developing move. Hits the queen. Queen could just lift to d2. Or we could have this, or we could have this. Uh, this is like tempo losing, because he pushes his pawn and then I kind of retreat the bishop. However, is it worth the loss of a tempo? Or do we just take here? Bishop takes, takes. He has to recapture. Loses castling rights. Um, if pawn takes straight away, trade queens lose castling rights. I also have a check with bishop b4, c3. No, I think we just take. I think the, the loss of castling rights at this point in the game is significant enough okay but now you see this bishop's still bad so we definitely trade queens and i want to prove that this was this was a mistake e4 followed by a fianchetta so that's like my strategic idea in the game so i could push for example bishop g4 check but then he pushes i have to retreat maybe he pushes again don't know Let's develop bishop c5. This again is kind of forcing. And developing. I'm definitely drawn to the idea of long castles if it comes with an immediate rook on d8 with check, right? So no bad thing. So knight out, natural square. Bishop's got a couple of options. In fact, even if he does this, I then have long castles with check. Forcing. Maybe. That might be worth thinking about. Yeah, just been really, really stupid the last couple of days. My blitz ratings down to twelve fifty. Oh, well. Okay, so all right. So I see what he's doing. He's moved, he's moved the pawn that was under attack. Okay, I'm going to develop my knight. I'm going to get my bishop out, and then probably. 
Another pawn move. Bishop just here. And it's got reasonable view. It can. It's eyeing up five squares in my opponent's half of the board. Longcastle's into check. And look at his development. That isn't there. Check now. I might kick this bishop around a bit. I want to keep my rook on here. So I'm just uncomfortable about this pin. I, I don't want to maintain it. If I kick back, pff, lost because of g3. So I'm going to kick him immediately. Are you going to trade off? You can't go there. Can't go there. Can't go back there. So we've got two options. That, that, or trading. Now I'm not up in material at this point. What I do have is good control over the uh, over his king in a, in a sense. Well, his king hasn't got many squares. Can't come to any of these, right? And he's way behind on development. Both knights, both rooks still in the box. I think he's going to have to trade off here. I've got ideas of... So this, and there we go, trades. And this is a bad bishop as well. He's, he's literally got no development to speak of. There and that actually threatens to win. Oh, apart from the knight guards, that's square. All right, we've got the bishop pair. Um, right, well, I think what I want to avoid is, is f4 trading off here. But if f4 he takes, I just take back and it continues to blockade on e4. I feel like this is critical. So I don't want to start doing things like this. Right? I'm just inviting his bishop to become a piece again. It's just right now it's just not. So I'm, I'm feeling like doubling up on the D file. Might drop my bishop into here still. See his knight's not happy. His knight can't. If his knight goes there. I've got the option to snatch it off, mess up his pawns. Okay. Can I go in here? That's dangerous, because I get... Tr no, I don't. Yeah, I kind of do. Or do I just drop back and defend? I'm going to drop back for now. It's a bishop, after all. Might not be the most accurate move, but hey, hey. I'm relatively comfortable. Um, so my opponent's moved a bunch of pawns. Does not have good king safety. Is about to engage his rooks into the game. This rook is the only defender of this pawn, by the way, which is under attack. Um, rook hd8 is a very natural looking. All right, that's interesting. A5 now, he can't take because he loses the knight. But does this benefit me in any way? His knight can't come here. I could just play that if this is his idea. But is it a threat? Not really. I can kick him if he comes, right? You should also consider the possibility of like this. Like if I give up the bishop with check... Can't go here because I'm a light square bishop. So he has to retreat. I think I take, pawn takes, knight takes, check. Bishop guards these. He might come here. I think before we do that, let's just bring both rooks into play. So I've got the option of, for example, this. I, I can't see how it works now, but I'm, I'm thinking about the bishop sack for these two key pawns. Leaves him with an isolated pawn as well, which is another weakness. This bishop is still bad. If takes, takes, takes now. He's in check. Okay. Uh. 
Um, let's think it through right now. The 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 check. All squares you can't go to. And all of these, of course. So he's got. Oh, and the other thing is, this is assuming this move order that pawn takes first, right? But then I am attacking the knight outright. So he might trade rooks first. Um, he's got a problem. The king has to defend the rook as well. Here, if, if pawn takes, check. King could attack my knight. But if it attacks my knight, I just win the rook. Pawn doesn't take, let's see, trades rooks first, then pawn takes. It's actually the same kind of difference. Does it work though? Or do I just play a5? I think I prefer a5, just maybe threatening just to bust these pawns open. Keep these bishops together. I I just don't I don't see a win there. And I've got to have a damn good reason to separate these bishops, really. So I like this. He can't take because it hangs the knight. I'm threatening to take here. Pawn takes, bang. I've lost nothing. And I've got in the check that I wanted. And I've got still got both my bish bishops. So that's my threat. If you take the rook, I just recapture with a rook. Still guarding d1. I'm definitely at the uh, lower, uh, that just hangs the knight. Lower end of my performance range right now. Okay, so I'm down a, I'm up a knight for a pawn. Both on 11 minutes. I now have a winning position. Now, a lot of people at this point, when they realise they've screwed up, start just exchanging out of rage. I would be very happy to see that. Okay, I have this move now. And he's resigned. Curious. Okay, well let's see what let's see what went wrong for White. And I, I do recommend that you try and do this at the end of every game before going into computer analysis if that's what you do. Okay, this already feels to me like, I'm gonna stick the eval on actually. Um, yeah, it's already equalized, 0 0.1. In fact, minus 0 0.4. So it goes from plus 0.3 in White's favor after this move to, well, it's jumping around a bit, but it says black is already slightly better, if anything here, which is fascinating. So I then play knight f6, which is fine. d3, I wasn't keen on. It's now gone to 0 0.6, 0 0.4 again in black's favor. So, this this is I think just like a strategic mistake to put your put your pawn here, right? In fact, after this move, right? So now already this is a closed file. That means this pawn can't move forward. This pawn can't move forward. So why carry on with this idea? I don't know. You don't normally get the king's Indian attack from this kind of move order. Okay, so then I strike for the center. And the computer approves. It thinks that that was, that was a good thing to do. And now if he the bishop anyway, mistake by the look of it. He's lost like nearly a whole pawn that way. Because what he's done is he's put his bishop on a square where it's really only got two, two squares. Right? So he's already worse. And now I trade, and it, it likes that. Trade off the queens, okay. Develop bishop. Black is still better, 1.5 now. 
pushes a pawn in, again in front of his bishop. He's, he's made his bishop worse, if anything. But, but but he wanted to move it, so what else has he got? I mean, he could have put his knight here, but then I can take out the knight. Bishop takes, I, I win the pawn anyway, I guess. But this is this is the thing, right? I developed a piece with a threat that meant that my opponent then had to do something he maybe didn't want to do, which was that. Right? So now I develop again. Again, it likes that. Now C3. More development. I'm only 0.5 of a pawn up now. Comes in, I castle into check. King moves, we kick. 0.8. Okay. I want to keep the bishop pair. Knight here. And looks like a mistake has been made. And after this, I'm lining him up to blunder and blunder he does. Okay. So let's have a, so why was it like, I mean, I think a big theme of this was that white's pieces just didn't get involved in the game early, early enough. So let's paste the clean PGN into an analysis board and see what the computer thinks. See what what can the computer add to our own analysis? So that that's the way I'm thinking about it. His pieces just never got involved. 84.6 accuracy from me, 10.50, which is appropriate, and I played like a 1900. Apparently, excellent. It's a bit of a turn up for the books. Okay, we're actually going to flip the board. We're going to see it from. And this is a mistake, We're already a mistake. Okay, I should have threatened winning the pawn. It liked the immediate d5. I guess, you know, if, if pawn takes, queen takes, we're immediately targeting the rook. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so d3, okay. Now d5 again is best. Good. And again, inaccurate. So it feel, it seems like these are, well, it's a developing move, right? What, what can be wrong? Well, it's a developing move that, you know, property is all about location, 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 right? Look at that bishop. It's, it has no prospects there. That's the point. So black is already slightly better. And this is best to trade off and trade queens. Right? It could be worth maybe a pawn. Bishop out is okay. Ignore. Okay, best move actually there, right? But let's say it was the least worst move because this really isn't a great move for white. It takes a square, a square away from the bishop. It means that two more pawns have to move for that bishop ever to open up on this diagonal should it want to. And that's where it is right now, right? Also gets in the way of this knight developing. So not great. Okay, excellent move. Excellent move. Bishop e6 is good. That's a very unhuman move. Not fantastic, just castles with check. Okay, steps away. And now, okay, didn't like this. Huh. Point four of a pawn difference. Okay, but we we get the double pawns, but I still have the bishop pet. Okay, knight comes out. Didn't like this. Yeah, maybe. But like I, I kept saying, I just wanted to keep this bishop boxed in. Right, it makes it easy makes it easier for me not to do that. Okay. Oh, we didn't like that. Huh. That's the move we considered. 0.7 of a pawn difference. Okay. So he could have punished me there. <laughs> That's just odd. Okay. So I double up here. Okay. 
Okay, a5 is good. And that's a mistake because it loses the knight. And then the game's pretty much over. There you go. Actually, mate in seven from this point. Who'd have thought that? So yeah, no fireworks. Nothing spectacular. But just it's inaccuracy upon inaccuracy, even in the opening phase. You can see how hard it made life for my opponent. Look, look at this situation now. I've got both bishops. Both bishops are active. Both bishops are actually looking at, at squares around my opponent's king. I've got two rooks on an open file. I've got a very well-placed knight. Okay, And all of that, while my opponent has one rook that's never moved, a bishop that's entombed behind its own pawns, a weakish knight. Do you know what I mean? Let, and that's because of moves like this. And then he does this. Okay, and it seems like this is nothing. This is move four, move four of the game, but he's already minimizing or reducing his scope to control the board. So he's invested two moves in this. He's invested a move in g3 and then another one in bishop g2. What's he got for his trouble? Well, nothing. You know, the bishop's looking at this square and it's looking at this square. That's it. Okay, so his, his, his control over the board just hasn't increased. All right, how many squares is he looking at in my half of the board? One, two, three, four, I think. Yeah, four. I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six as well. Seven, eight, already on move four. In fact, I've only played three moves, right? So I'm actually controlling more squares in my opponent's side of the board than he is in mine, even though he's had one more move. See? Get rid of the queens. And what this does is it not only means that he can't castle, it means that it's going to take him a lot longer to get either of, well, one of these rooks into play. Because castling not only gets your king to safety, but engages your rooks as well. Okay, just more develop. I'm just getting everything out into the board. Castles is best. This was not fantastic. So, yeah, I, I knew that was kind of conservative. And just doubling up on the open file. And then tactics at the end. And that's it. Right? But good positions create the possibilities for tactics. So there you go, relatively satisfying. We continue our two steps forward, one step back, or sometimes one step forward, two steps back in the old series. But uh, yeah, I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.